Welcome back. We've already looked at five tree swing illustrations in previous parts and talked about how these apply to algo trading. So now let's move on to the next. How the novice algo trader approach trading system development. Okay, listen carefully because this is a really important one. There is a huge temptation for novice algo traders to put all of their focus on the use of indicators to build a system. The indicators are represented here by the swing itself in white. When I provide consultancy to traders and ask what the bigger picture is behind their system, in other words, what their trading premise is, or the fundamental reasons why their system will make any money from an edge, the reply is very often given by talking about indicators. But it's not about indicators. The most important aspect of designing a new trading system is nothing whatsoever to do with indicators. It's about looking at how price action behaves and in particular how repeatable patterns occur in the price data alongside other probability based elements of market dynamics and how these can be turned to your advantage to give you a potential edge. And this is represented by the tree here in black that seems to have been completely forgotten by the trader. You need to focus on the tree first, after and only after you've identified a potential edge from the market dynamics, should you then ask the question about, okay, which indicators will help me to exploit that edge in a systematic and quantifiable way. So trying to build the indicator swing before you fully considered the market tree is a huge mistake. It's very unlikely you'll achieve a reliable, profitable system by taking only the indicator approach. How the trading system was documented. Once you have a portfolio of different trading systems and you haven't been back to a system in a while, you can forget the intricacies of it. This can cause misunderstanding to be made and also potentially cause a divergence between what the code is doing and what the underlying premise of the system was if you then make inappropriate changes to the code. I can't stress enough how advantageous it is to have good quality documentation for each system. Use images of price data to show how the system is supposed to operate. Use snippets of code and explain the logic. If you have many systems like myself, it gets really difficult to remember the detail of all of them if you don't have good documentation. When it then comes to implementing some kind of improvement or re-optimizing in the future, Without this documentation, it takes a significant amount of time to go through the code, try to understand how things are working all over again, and why you did things one way as opposed to a different way. So the time spent on documentation will be less than the time you'll otherwise need to spend on relearning your system every time you come back to it. And it's likely to mean you avoid making costly mistakes when you do introduce those enhancements. So before we bring this episode to a close, let's just consider the kind of system that the algo trader actually needed. For me, simplicity is beautiful. A simple algo system with a few simple rules is much harder to overfit. It can be understood so much more easily. It can be mapped onto a premise and validated more easily. For systems that are overly complex, it's sometimes difficult to know if they're doing what they're supposed to be or not. You'll find yourself looking at a trade that just opened and wondering what the combination of logic was that meant it did open. Should it have opened or was it an error in the code? Who knows? With a simple system, you don't get this and other problems. Okay, so we've looked at seven of our 14 topics this week. Next week, I'll be looking at another seven. 
So if you want to be notified when this episode is out, then subscribe below and click on the small bell icon to be notified. If you've liked the contents today, then like it, please. And until next time, trade safe.